What is going on, Lucid fans? Welcome back to Financial Journey. So Q2 earnings were just announced and set for August the 3rd for Lucid. I'm going to talk about some possible surprises that might actually come from that during the conference call. But before I get into any of that, though, making sure you guys hit that thumbs up, subscribe, do all that fun stuff. I greatly appreciate that. With that, though, let's get right to it. Live ticker is going at the very bottom. It is a very positive day, but I'm not necessarily going to touch so much on the price today. I want to talk on purely earnings. So this was recently tweeted today. Lucid Motors to report second quarter financial results on Wednesday, August the 3rd. So I did do a video, my expectations on the Q2 earnings, just basically the highlights. So such as earnings per share, revenue, future growth, things like that. Some basic fundamentals that a lot of investors really care about. So if you do want to know about that, make sure you watch that video. Um, it's very informative. I give you my expectations on deliveries, things like that. But I want to talk today on this video in actual surprises. And there's been a lot of things that they have uh, really alluded to that possibly could be discussed and in previous earnings though they've been very uh, neutral if you want to say it nicely and unfortunately they haven't really elaborated to the best of their ability so hopefully they do change that but that aside though I want to refer back to this because most likely this was actually planned uh, lucid is very good for their Easter eggs and kind of just ingraining something so actually the last roughly about one minute of this video they talk on the ESS and how basically you can charge your actual uh, building um, just based on several different lucids all lined up so hands down I think this is a very big deal and it is going to be very beneficial and I think this like I said is very well timed um, as far as what they were intending on doing and ultimately they do talk on the wonder box and things like that but I feel that the ESS is one component that they're really going to talk on and elaborate on in this upcoming earnings because the previous two earnings so it was a potential post question in Q4 unfortunately it was not asked but in Q1 they actually did ask this so this is all the trans script from the Q1 earnings. So our next question is about uh, in July 2021, you mentioned the prototype energy ESS system. Um, how is it working and blah, 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 things like that. They basically do say our first prototype has validated the capability of our technology is running um, basically on in Silicon Valley on the fields, uh, solar fields, and that they are going to be starting to integrate their second prototype at the factory. So this leads me to believe that they're a lot farther along than that they kind of uh, put themselves off as because keep in mind over the last little bit just in Q2 within that time frame they have technically leased facility a uh, leased land I should say in Tempe I'm really sorry if I said that wrong again I'm really working on that but Tempe hopefully uh, but still uh, 116,000 square foot facility Again, that could be capable for this ESS system, part of their second prototype that they alluded to in Q1, or they technically did lease a plot of land connected to their actual app facility, and they also did buy land connected to their app facility. So, so maybe one of those is related to the ESS, but regardless of all of that, I think they do have to address that because clearly adding three different plots of land in Arizona, what are they doing? They have to elaborate on that. This is where it's not necessarily the fault of management. I think it's the fault of technically analysts because we all know during uh, their conference calls, analysts have the capability and opportunity to ask questions. And I feel if there is no analyst that asks, what are they intending on doing with all of that? I feel like we have absolutely horrible analysts just reviewing and looking at Lucid. So it might be one of those things, but hopefully they do address that because that would be a very big catalyst if you ask me. Secondly, could be this. So a lower price vehicle by mid decades. So they did recently elaborate as well at the Goodwin Festival that they are going to be doing a kind of a lower priced uh, mid-sized vehicle. So a SUV-ish around the 50,000 price point, which hands down is going to be very beneficial for Lucid. Again, this might be a very strong surprise if they actually do bring that up or whether it's brought up by an analyst. Again, there's different ways how you can see that during an actual uh, conference call. Obviously, management can bring it up on their free will and things like that. But typically, based on the last couple earnings, it does appear that they like to just bring up the actual risks and kind of the progress of where things are and the successes. They don't necessarily like to open Pandora's box and talk about everything. Again, that is more so up to the analyst to decide and kind of piece together and ask the necessary questions. So again, this is where it's not always management's fault. It is largely as well 
poor analysts reviewing Lucid. But once again, it could potentially be brought up about this lower priced vehicle. And most likely as well, they will be bringing up how they potentially did push back obviously the the pier and the grand touring things like that especially what they've been alluding to over the last little bit so that might be obviously brought up that would be a little bit more of a negative possibly though on the contrary though hopefully they do bring up actual and a partnership because the last one they did technically talk on and allude to about the nvidia how that's such a big deal and going forward is going to be uh, just pivotal in their actual success and they brought up all about that but hands down looking here this was recently the latest thing that's floating around is Aston Martin. I did bring this up in a live stream yesterday. So hopefully they do allude to that or whether it be Apple or another partnership or even if they just allude saying, you know what, we are looking for partnership opportunities, things like that. In the Q4 earnings though, they did say that they're open to a partnership. They didn't really discredit uh, or cancel or say or deny, I should say, the Apple partnership, but they did say that they're open to actual partnerships. So again, it might be something that we hear from this and it's one of those things that if they say this then this stock will absolutely run to high hell it will go up so fast because i think all of us as investors just want to grasp onto something concrete Yes, we know that they're technically doing a lot of deliveries, maybe not to our expectation or maybe enough to actually get to that 12,000. I'm not really sure. Um, hopefully they do allude to that and talk on how there's no supply chain issues. And keep in mind today, Tesla does have their earnings. So they will technically still do the same criteria, talk on earnings per share, revenue, future growth. They'll talk on delivery numbers. Again, all of those kind of things will definitely trickle down to Lucid, the good, the bad, and the ugly as it always does but i think those are the in some some of the things that i would be most excited about obviously i think the ess system is one of those things that hands down they can really uh, work on um, and that they do have the capability of having a very successful kind of a side project for lucid and what lucid actually can do in addition to that i'm a very big fan of lower price vehicles because i feel this is a way that you can hit that middle class gm just came out saying that they're going to have their blazer around the $45,000 price point, 45 to 66, give or take. But this is where we can actually compete with a lot of the bigger names. And hands down, what's been floating around is GM is the only one that is actually able and capable of taking down Tesla or even competing with them. And I disagree with that. I think Lucid definitely can do that. And with a mid sized vehicle and a lower price point as well, we can definitely do that, get Lucid's name out there. Because even with the Goodwin Festival, what recently happened, we surprised a lot of people. We got our name out there and it was basically free advertising if you want to consider it that way. And even there's more articles that is being talked about about this. Still saying that the Air Grand Touring, the performance is being dominated at the Goodwood Festival and that it doesn't disappoint, things like that. Obviously, I'm a very big fan of Lucid and I really want it to do well. And I know in the long term, it's going to do a lot of good things. Just hopefully during the Q2 earnings, they act a little bit more enthusiastic so let me know your thoughts on that in the comments below let me know your thoughts if there is another surprise that you assume or would like to see um, during the q2 earnings that i didn't really talk on so let me know your thoughts on that if you haven't already hit that thumbs up subscribe do all that fun stuff i greatly appreciate that with all that i appreciate you guys watching and let's all make a lot of money on lucid